Awesome. It smells freaking delicious. And this is what it looks like. You guys check it out. It was ripping hot right now. I'm gonna just put it on this board. This is how I'm gonna serve it. Center of the table. Slice it up ahead of time. Leave one hole so you can see the pieces. It's just one of the most fantastic dishes you can possibly feed anybody as far as barbecue goes. Hello, and welcome back to the Wicked Kitchen. We are in the kitchen today, and I'm gonna show you something super special. I'm gonna be showing the infamous cluster brown steaks. So we're gonna make a, an amazing version of a vegan, what did I call it? Vegan cluster brown, vegan barbecue cluster browns. Vegan barbecue cluster brown steaks. So you guys, this recipe is also in the book except I used my Taki in the book because I was in the Pacific Northwest when we wrote that book. Here, you can use the same exact recipe, but with cluster browns. And these are gorgeous, check these out. So we were just in the mushroom grow house uh, the other day over at Smithy's up in Lancashire, Lancashire. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce all the names here. Um, this is one of the mushrooms we saw and we talked about with John, Dorian. And it's one of my favorite ones to cook with and I've been using it a lot since I moved here in the UK. You guys, this mushroom is part of our whole mission to change the world with the way people eat mushrooms and how to have amazing plant-based alternatives that are all natural, all right? This is not processed. This is just gonna be some fire some iron, some sharp knives, some techniques, and some patented pressing that I'm gonna show you now. And remember, you saw it here first. Now this technique, you don't have to use cast iron, but it definitely helps. Because the, the, the thing about the cast iron pan, you guys, is that it's, such, it's so heavy, so I feel like I get a good workout in it while I'm cooking. So I, I kind of coin it a kitchen CrossFit because it is so heavy. It's literally you could do <laughs> you could do curls with them. It's like I'm camping indoors all the time. So let's get this started. I'm going to start this up. So we're going to get that pan ripping hot, and I'm going to trim these mushrooms. I need my knife. So I'm going to trim. I'm just going to slide this over here for a second. And we're going to trim these mushrooms. So I want to keep it as one steak. And this is a really good cluster. So when I find really big ones, or if John sends me some of these amazing ones, or if you find them in the market, I try to keep it all together. Whereas a lot of people, what I've seen is they rip it apart. I want the whole thing because it's part theater. You eat with your eyes, it's gonna taste delicious. I guarantee you that. So the only part you need to trim off is where the, the hay, where it grew off of the substrate. And I don't want to trim too much because I want it to stay together. So it's just that piece, okay? Just a little bit more in here. Okay, just make sure there's no hairs. So it's still a nice one piece. All right, so we're getting the pan ripping hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. So you can add as little or as much oil as you would like. I will see how much depends on the mushroom because what happens is, and I'll explain as we go on the process, as we press the mushroom, think of it as a sponge. As we press the mushroom, it's gonna expel water. As that water evaporates, it's gonna soak in whatever flavor and whatever else we're cooking with. Now remember, if we're comparing this to animal products, this has like no saturated fat, no cholesterols. It has no fat, so or very, very little, you know. So by adding the flat in, fat into it, I want that mouthfeel and that flavor. I'm not going for healthy with this dish, even though it's naturally healthier because it is plant-based. I am going for full indulgent, indulgent barbecue, and we're gonna make it happen. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil here. Freaking. Everything is childproof, and that means it's Derek proof. <laughs> so 
So a good couple teaspoons, tablespoons. And remember you guys, this, these pans get so hot that you need to use a towel or sometimes they have those little kits you can put on the, on the side of it. But that's really hot. You can see it starts going away. It's just, I love it. And the smell of the, the actual iron to me is just, I don't know, there's something about it. So I do the, I, to get really into the detail of this is I put the stem side down. Because the stem is the hardest part, I want to cook that the most. So this is going to go down and it's going to create a really nice sear. So when you think about the, the flame, right, if I show you the flame, this one, this burner is not so bad, but the flame goes to the outer edge of the pan. So that means the middle of this pan is not the hot spot. I want that stem on the hot spot. This is the tip. So always keep the stem towards the edge because that is the hottest part of the, of the pan. And I'll add the rest of them here too. And even the little pieces. So a little tip for you guys that don't have cast iron pans. You can use regular saute pans if you like. And then you're gonna need to have a weight. So what I'm gonna use is two cast iron pans. I like to, you know, I've built up my collection. If there's one thing I enjoy is a, a nice set of sharp, amazing knives and cast iron pans and a steam basket, which we're not using today, but it's one of my three favorite things in the kitchen. So if you don't have another cast iron pan, you could use like any kind of a pot, any kind of a something you would boil water in and cook pasta in. I would add a little bit of water to it because you're looking for weight. So how I'm gonna do this, and I'll do it right now, is this is the pressing technique, and this is how we're gonna start. Take one pan, and you just carefully lower it onto the mushroom. So you know it's on there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is slightly press the mushrooms a little bit harder, and you'll hear the sizzle. Not too much pressure, but just enough so you're exerting a little bit of effort. Now I'll let that sit for a minute. What's happening now is all the mushrooms, the moisture in that mushroom is totally coming out. Oh, hold on one second, you guys. I think my brother's calling. Hey man. Dude, I'm cooking the mushrooms. I'm doing the pressing technique and I'm ha hanging out here. I want you to wave to these guys, all right? That's my brother Chad, you guys. He's off in Austin, Texas. Hey, yo, what's up? Well, good luck with the shoot today, bro. All right, dude, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right, later, man. Awesome. Chad's busy doing some stuff in Texas. So, you guys, back to the mushrooms. This is perfect timing. Now, you're gonna need another towel, so as I lift this off, you're gonna see all the water that's been coming out. And I like to wipe the pan, right? You wipe that down, set it to the side. Now look at this, it's, it's going perfectly. It, the sizzle has disappeared. So all the water is coming out of the mushrooms. And we're starting to really begin the whole press technique. I've seen a lot of people doing this from the recipe on the book. If you guys do this, give us a tag, give us a shout. We'll repost it on our Instagram stories. And I love seeing everybody that's been doing it. Thank you so much for, for really getting into the whole cooking of mushrooms. I mean, it's, it's such a game changer. So what I wanna do with this is let the water evaporate a little bit. And it doesn't take too long, a couple minutes. And then I'm gonna season it. I, season, I do not season I do not, I do not, I, I need to learn how to talk a little bit better. I don't season it right now. What I wanna do, or I don't season it when I first put the mushrooms in the pan because it's a waste. All that water just comes up and then it goes back in and I don't need it burning in the pan. So what I'm gonna do is let that water evaporate and then I'm gonna season the top of this side that I'm gonna flip over. 
So I always season the second side, not the first time we put it on, but the second. And we'll season it, put it on the bottom. That way it keeps the seasoning from go, transferring onto this top pan and it keeps it on the mushroom. So you take your favorite barbecue sauce and I did, I bought this at the store and it's one of my favorite ones. I can't remember the brand and nor do I want to say the brand because in every different country and every store there's always different styles of barbecue sauce. So whatever is your favorite barbecue sauce, get that. And I also got in the UK here, we have this amazing brew dog beer, which is vegan beer. And these guys are not paying me, but I do, when I like to have a beer, I want to have a vegan beer for one. And I also want to have a brew dog, which is great. So. This, I just want to, I, I need to make sure it's, it hasn't gone bad. Yep, it's good, okay. So, I'm just going to add a little bit, just for that extra twang. This beer is delicious. It's the Elvis juice. I'm adding maybe half a cup, just enough to thin it out, because we're going to cook this down, and you'll see. So, we have the mushrooms going here. For seasonings, I bought a barbecue blend seasoning. In the spice section of any retail market, Tesco sells a bunch of different ones. So this is just a, a barbecue rub seasoning that you, you know, some people would put on animals, um, but we're not doing that anymore. So let's use it on plants. And I'm gonna use it on this mushroom. So a good fair amount. Like don't be shy with it. just onto the mushroom part. We'll season it again too, as we flip it. I'm gonna use a little bit of the black pepper as well. I'm gonna use a pinch of garlic granular, granulated garlic. I don't wanna use fresh garlic for this, you guys, because it will burn. I'm not, I don't want it burnt. And I'm gonna use a little bit of salt, and the salt will help obviously enhance flavor, but it'll also help draw out more of the moisture. So that is going good. What I'm gonna do now is add a little bit more oil. So when I flip it over, the bottom side with all the seasonings will get, will have that oil. So just another tablespoon and a half. And can't forget the towel. You know, you burn your hands a couple times and you learn quick. Now just be careful when you're flipping it over. Oh. I don't want to break it up, but this one piece is going to break. Jeez. So anyways, it broke. You just have to be a little bit delicate with them. I mean, they're fine any size you want. I always try to keep the biggest size because the bigger the size, of the mushroom steak, just the more like brilliance it is and the more, I don't know, it's just exciting and theatrical to see this spread out on a cutting board when you're serving your friends. So that looks delicious right now. Now what I'm gonna do is press it again. All right, depending on the size of the mushroom, every mushroom's different. I could be pressing it in one, two, three flips. It depends. We'll see how we go with this. It might only take two. So this is another one right here. Putting it down. And then I'm just adding a little bit of pressure, not too much. This is what I would call interactive cooking. So you're really getting in with the food. You can really feel like, I don't know, I'm kind of crazy where I developed this technique quite a few years ago, and it's all like thinking about that mushroom. When you see like these, the petals, right? What it does is it forms this natural sort of marbling that you would normally find in a steak, right? They call it marbling, all the fat lines. So this totally reminds me of that when it's pressed down. It's just layers and layers of flavoring. So each layer, like with all the seasoning, goes in between, and then it's pressed down with a little bit of that oil and that fat. I mean, it makes my mouth water thinking about it because this is not something that is normal 
and has never been done before. So this is one of the reasons the technique is so good. So I'm gonna take this pan off again. Now the water has come out a little bit more. It's really looking gorgeous. So you guys see that? It's starting to really get a nice, nice golden brown on the exterior. It's shrunken down. You see from the size of it, I'm just gonna show you this because I mean, it's so important. You see the size and then you see the pan and what it, what it is now. So I'm gonna season this side. Again, with the, with the barbecue saw, the barbecue uh, rub powder. God, I gotta keep learning how to talk. A generous helping of the barbecue flavor. Another little pinch of the black pepper. Another little pinch of the granulated garlic. And then also another little pinch of salt. And it's starting to smell really, really good. All right, so this is almost done. And there's nothing better than waiting for your food to cook. All right, you guys. Good job with the brew dog. This is delicious, that Elvis juice. Sorry if you guys are in a different country that you can't get this, but if you're ever in the UK, try these guys out. Brew dog. Brew dog. Brew dog. <laughs> I wonder if I can make a living at doing commercials. <laughs> now I'm gonna add a little bit more oil because I can feel, you know, when you're cooking, you really feel and get in tune with the food. I feel it starting to, like the, the herbs, there's a lot of spice on here, so I wanna make sure. I'm not going to have them stick too much, so I add a little bit on the edge and then I'll just swirl it around, make sure it gets down underneath, and then I'll flip this again. Now you're st it's really starting to come together. Oh man, and now it's this charred bit that is really, that's your flavor you guys, this, it's that Oh, I don't know how to describe it. It's just that umami, like that charring, that crispy, that golden brown. It's not burnt, it's just right. It's like that right there is money. It's freaking amazing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add the barbecue sauce to a bigger bowl. All right, and I'm gonna get the pan ready. You guys, I'm a big fan of parchment paper on top of baking sheets. It helps for easy cleanup, especially when you're using messy things like barbecue sauce or any kind of sauce item that you're throwing in the oven. Now you might wonder why I'm not throwing the cast iron right in the oven because you can put the cast iron right in. I don't wanna bake a sauce type item and really, especially like a tomato based sauce. So some of the more acidic foods I try not to cook in the cast iron pan because it's more prone to promote rusting afterwards. So I just try to avoid it. Plus, it's a pain in the butt to clean. So I could press it, if I wanna do like, I wanna keep it kinda of thin. So this is gonna remind me more of like, whether you wanna call it a steak or a, a chicken breast or whatever. I'm gonna keep this a little bit thick so you can judge how thin or thick you wanna do when you're pressing it. Now if I wanted to do a theme where I was doing like a skirt steak style, um, I would press it even more and more. If I wanted to do cutlets later and let them cool and then bread them and fry them again, I could do cutlets or sch sch schnitzels. <laughs> um, I really need to take some uh, talking classes if anybody out there. <laughs> so let's flip these again. Man, this is looking good. I don't think I'm going to season it again. I think I got enough season on there but you'll see the bits, like these crispy bits are the what's delicious. So the more crispy bits you can get without making this whole thing fall apart, the better. So that is looking amazing right now. I'm gonna let it go for like one more minute. All right guys, so I believe the mushrooms are ready. They're good enough for me at the moment. They're nice and charred, crispy on both sides. So what I'm gonna do here is 
put it right into the sauce. So I thin that sauce out with the beer. It's nice, it's not super thick right now, so it'll, it'll sit in here. All the bits in there. I mean, it just looks like chicken breast to me. But it's not, it's mushrooms. So you guys, for one second, what I'm gonna do is because, if you notice the pan, I try to take care of everything that I'm doing. Um, I wanna clean the pan right now. I have time that's gonna sit for a second. So all I'm gonna do is quickly rinse it out and then wipe it with some paper towels. All right guys, so, so I literally just went over, rinsed it out in the sink. Wipe it out, see? A little bit of dirt. And now, to take care of it, as I was mentioning before, just as a quick little self-care. You know, we have self-love, self-care. I do my own pan care. It's part of being a well-rounded, holistic person. And I just wipe that out, just like that. Even on the bottom and around it. It helps seal it, it helps protect it, because this pan right here does so much good. I wanna take care of it. All right, you guys, so back into the mushrooms. So if you're looking to have like a barbecue tomorrow or another day, I would leave this in the barbecue sauce and just let it sit and marinate overnight. You can do different flavors, you can do teriyaki, you can do hoisin, you can do char siu. We have so many different flavors and actually recipes in the book for the same exact way that we're doing it. And we actually have a barbecue sauce in there as well. So this, I'm just gonna make sure it's totally coated, but I'm gonna get right in there with my hands and make sure, all right? I'm not opposed to getting in there and getting dirty. I wanna make sure it's totally coated and covered. And I don't want these to rip apart because this is part of the dish. So I'm just going to place it right in. I like that. All these little parts. Okay. Awesome. I'm just going to wash my hands quick. Okay, so hands are washed. Mushrooms are on the plate. So I'm just going to add a little bit more barbecue sauce to the steaks before I pop them in the oven just to make sure they're totally covered. Right, just on the top. I don't want it running off too much because this is the part that'll really roast on there and stick and cling and be delicious. So I'm gonna pop this right in the oven. So you guys, for this dish, I'm gonna serve it right on a cutting board. So I'm just gonna put this down here like this. So the thing about cutting, you guys, if you don't cook a lot, the key to cutting is always keeping your fingers behind the knife. And if you can see from the above shot, you'll never cut yourself because it rests right on this knuckle. And it's super important to learn that and to practice and go slow and use this rocking technique and you can get super thin slices. You'll get, you just get good over time. It's about consistency and practice. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this on the side here so we can use it in a minute. So you guys, I'll say it when it comes out, but this technique right here, it'd be great for sandwiches. It's good on its own. It's great with mashed potatoes, roasties, hash browns, wed potato wedges, french fries, anything, you corn on the cob. I mean, it's an amazing, it's a barbecue dish. So serve it with all your favorite barbecues. We have a Wicked Kitchen coleslaw, Wicked Kitchen potato salad, anything you want. You can chill it and just have it on salads the next day. You can make sandwiches with it. So many applications and it's such a delicious main main item. Like it's veg center plate like you've never had before. It's so good. I'm gonna pull it out. Awesome. It smells freaking delicious. 
And this is what it looks like. All right, so this. I'm gonna slice this. All right. Oh, it's so freaking good. Now it's hot as a mother. So we're gonna leave this like this, spread it out a little bit so you can see the insides. Cut these pieces. So guys, this is it. Put a little bit of green onion around. Just a little bit, not too much. I can't get away without trying this, so it's awesome. Dude, so good. And that beer just adds a little bit of extra, extra. We have extra sauce, you can add more sauce to it, but this is, this is the dish right there. This is what is gonna help change the world. So make sure you subscribe, check out all the other videos we have, and I'll see you in the next time. There are amazing craft beers that are vegan. Look for the vegan label, and check the ingredients, and search why beer might not be vegan. You'd be really surprised.